All right. Hey, um, I think let's move on to the speaker at this point. Um, Major Norton, thank you for your patience. This is all new to everybody, so we're heading or starting a little late, but you can have a little more time in the back end, so no problem. Yep. Um, Carrie, would you like to introduce Major Norton? Yes, I would love to. So <laughs> just have a little introduction, a small bio of our divisional commander, uh, Major Darren Norton. So let me just say that real quick. <clears throat> So in July of 2018, um, Major Darren Norton was appointed Divisional Commander of the Salvation Army Golden State Division. Um, based in San Francisco, the Golden State Division covers all the Salvation Army operations in the 16 counties of Central California. Um, Darren is married to Mary, also a major in the Salvation Army, and they have been Salvation Army leaders for 23 years, with previous appointments in Salem, Oregon, Pasadena, California, and San Diego, California. Majors Darren and Mary have four children and recently became empty nesters. Major Darren was born and raised in London, England, and enjoys soccer, Indian food, and a good cup of tea. <laughs> he's an amazing um, leader, and I'm really happy and honored that he's here joining us at the Breakfast Club. So, Great. Well, thank you, Carrie, and uh, good morning, everybody. Hopefully, uh, everyone can see me and hear me this morning. Um, it's, uh, it's a pleasure for me. Uh, thank you, President Craig, for allowing me to speak and to be your first virtual speaker for the Golden Gate uh, Breakfast Club. This is very exciting. Actually, it's not my first meeting with you. Um, maybe a little over a year ago, I came as a guest with John McKnight. And uh, John invited me, so I did attend uh, one of your meetings and uh, just had a, had a terrific time. And uh, even hearing your introductions, it's, it's, uh, it's great to see so many of you. Um, I've only been in San Francisco about 18 months, but uh, already I, I recognize many of your faces. Some of you are on our boards and councils, are volunteers for our committees and events. And uh, some of you I recognize from, from our events. And uh, so it's great to, uh, to be with you um, uh, this morning. I, it was shared, I was born and raised in England and um, I, I checked on my, uh, my UK uh, news um, app this morning and, and found out that uh, Prince Charles has tested positive for, uh, for the coronavirus. And uh, I'm sure Patricia is aware of that already. And, uh, and so this, this virus is really no respecter of persons. Um, it, it's it's, it's a, a pandemic that is uh, changing our world rapidly. And so uh, it, it's a pleasure for me just to share a little bit about what's going on here in San Francisco. But uh, before I get into locally, maybe I can just start by, I, I just wrote down three things I maybe just want to share as kind of background uh, for you in relation to the Salvation Army and, um, and the coronavirus. I, I want to say first off that I think that the Salvation Army is one of the best positioned organizations to, to address uh, human need during the time of this crisis. Um, you may not be aware, but the Salvation Army is actively serving in 131 countries around the world. Uh, you'll notice the same uniform. We have the same uh, structure. Uh, we have the same mission, no matter where you go in the world. And so this global pandemic, um, which is affecting literally every country in the world, the Salvation Army is active in all of that. In the USA, um, the Salvation Army uh, is... Um, serving people in basically every zip code, uh, the Salvation Army has a presence and a ministry and we have services to people in need. Uh, we, have a, we have a structure that while can be a, a little slow for those of us on a day-to-day -day basis, trying to push things through uh, new programming and things like that, when it comes to a crisis, our network and our structure actually becomes a great strength for us. It becomes uh, something that allows us to um, uh, operate quickly, to mobilize uh, our units, our vehicles, to uh, repurpose our facilities. And um, during times of crisis, we uh, are there for people. We're active and we are, we are helping. So I, I want to suggest to you that uh, of all, like, all, all organizations, the Salvation Army is one of the best positioned to really meet the needs during time of crisis and certainly during this. The second thing I just wanted to share uh, at the beginning here would just be to say 
uh, you know, the Salvation Army is not new to crisis and disasters such as these. Uh, the Salvation Army here in San Francisco has been in operation since 1883. We've been here 137 years. So we have been with the people of San Francisco through all of the major events, all of the major disasters here locally, nationally for that time. And we have been, um, I think, a faithful, stable, consistent organization that has uh, leveraged our resources and our funds and our people and everything that we have to serve people in time of crisis. So I also think that is um, just important to recognize that uh, these days of crisis is, is not new for us. This is uh, this is what we do. This is why we exist. And we, um, we are for many, many thousands and thousands of people, millions across the country, um, a stable source of consistent hope and service and practical help for people in need during crisis. So that's not need, new to us. And then the third thing I would just say up front is that we, you know, our unique mission really allows us to step into um, into a place of greater service during times of crisis. Uh, the, the unique mission of the Salvation Army is very briefly, uh, our mission is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and to meet human needs in his name without discrimination. And so while uh, we are uh, very known for the practical services, the housing, the shelter, the food programs, the meals, the youth activities, the education programs, uh, all of those programs that we serve but behind that, we come with uh, a mission of providing emotional and spiritual care to people. So all of our officers are ordained ministers mm -hmm. and that leading our programs. And we are able to leverage in times of crisis when people are fearful and uncertainty and anxiety is, is reigning. Not only can we provide the practical assistance that's needed, but we uh, are also available to help bring a sense of peace and calmness to speak some truth and to provide you know, care, emotional, spiritual, to pray with people and to offer uh, a sense of community and uh, bringing people together. We're in the time of uh, social distancing. Mm -hmm. And so the Salvation Army is able to bring uh, a sense of connection, community, um, spiritual care um, uh, to people during, during times where we are isolated. So. Uh, I would just, by way of intro, just kind of mention those three things um, to uh, to share with you. Uh, a week ago, uh, San Francisco and some of our surrounding counties were all put uh, on a shelter in place. Only essential services um, are uh, expected to be existing. And I'm here to tell you that the Salvation Army is an essential service for people in need. And so we are today open and operational here in San Francisco and throughout uh, the country. Uh, our doors are open. Uh, yeah, we're doing things a little differently uh, because we're following local city, county, state mandates, but we are open and operational. Why? Because people are still in need. And I was thinking that, you know, during this pandemic crisis that we're in, um, hunger does not take uh, three weeks off. Mm -hmm. uh, poverty has not taken vacation. <laughs> Uh, and says to people, I'll see you on April 7th when, uh, when we get out of the shelter and hope. Uh, the truth is that hunger, poverty, basic human needs are existing in people's lives side by side with the uh, pandemic crisis. And so the Salvation Army provides essential services to uh, people in need. And we're providing that primarily today uh, in, in this form of shelter, of housing and then in food and meals. Uh, yes, we've adapted our operations. There's some things that we are not doing right now. So any of our congregate programs, uh, our senior centers that bring seniors together for uh, activities and for um, community, uh, obviously we've had to stop those. Um, we had some congregate meals in the, in the city uh, where we brought people together. Uh, we've had to stop those. Um, our after school programs, um, Obviously, we're not doing those at this time. So we are being very careful and cautious um, and following every city and, and county mandate to protect not, our, not only our own staff and volunteers, but obviously the people we serve. But when it comes to essential services, we are, we are open and uh, in operating, operation. And so uh, this morning, over 700 people uh, in the city of San Francisco woke up 
in a Salvation Army bed, over 700, between 700 and 750. And those programs are critical to those people's lives. And so we are committed to uh, keeping those programs, those shelters, those housing programs open and operational. One of our largest is uh, low-income seniors. We have uh, um, apartments for low-income seniors. We have about 286 apartments throughout the city, primarily in the Soma district area. We do have a few in Chinatown. Uh, these are, uh, this is not a nursing facility, it's not a care facility. These are independent uh, living apartments for low-income seniors in, in a partnership that we have with HUD. Uh, these are our most vulnerable population, and so uh, they have obviously been ordered to stay indoors, but we continue to look for new ways to serve those people and uh, to help provide food for them, to help provide meals to them while they can't uh, uh, get out themselves to provide that. So we're offering uh, some new services there. Uh, we have uh, officers uh, that are um, uh, oversee our SOMA facility on 4th Street, the uh, our um, Silvercrest residence for these seniors is right next door. And so they are uh, taking food boxes uh, to the residents with some of their volunteers. They're um, putting them on carts, they're walking them down the halls, knocking on the door. Uh, the volunteer or the officer, they're, they're taking uh, 10 paces aside, the, uh, the residents opening the door, taking the food box, they're having a little conversation sharing back and forth, making sure everything's okay, and then they are um, going on to the next room. So we are uh, providing that in a new way because we don't have our, our, our centers open. Our Harbor Light Center is, um, is uh, probably our, our critical program, our flagship program in the city. It's about 240 to 250 beds that we serve there, a variety of programs. We have a family shelter with 30 apartments that can handle up to 150 people. We have a recovery wellness or detox program for 30 individuals. And then we have about another 66 beds in our um, a treatment center for men and for, for women. So we um, are continuing to serve uh, the people there. We are open. Uh, we are closing down the borders. Uh, we are um, obviously ensuring that it's a safe place. Shelter in place is, uh, is, is, um, is activated there. Uh, so we are keeping people safe. We're uh, eliminating uh, any uh, visitors and people kind of going back and forth uh, outside um, uh, as much as we can. Uh, we are um, holding from uh, bringing new families or new individuals into the center um, as much as possible while we keep that place uh, secure. Obviously, we are doing Things a little differently inside. Uh, we're separating the congregate meals. People eat together, so we're making adjustments to that. Our group meetings are all being done with social dis distancing in mind, but we are continuing to serve and to reach out to those people and protect them and, and keep them safe. We also have 135 beds at our um, adult rehabilitation center, uh, primarily up in the Mission District. We have 110 beds for men, 125 beds for women. That program is is a is a work therapy uh, program and uh, that is connected to our uh, family thrift stores in town now we've had to close those stores obviously because of the, uh, the local directives uh, we don't want people coming together and so that is uh, that has changed things for us so we've obviously um keeping the men and women in that program um uh in in the facility where they are housed there's a warehouse we're still accepting donations our trucks are not going to uh, home to home to pick up donations at this point. We are allowing people to drop off donations for us in a safe um, environment. And so the men and women are still actively working to receive donations, to sort them. And they are obviously undertaking their classes for addictions, for anger management, for family, family therapy. And we are um, still graduating people, but we are, um, uh, not allowing new people into that program at this time, certainly while we're in the midst of this crisis. And as things evolve and change, we're, we're obviously working um, uh, working things through. Uh, I did hear yesterday that uh, uh, our food distributor for that program, Cisco, mm -hmm. dropped off 13,000 pounds of fresh produce, uh, way more than mm -hmm. they need. And so because the trucks are not uh, driving around the streets, picking up donations from your homes, uh, the trucks now are able to 
take that food and uh, our first priority is to get it over to these seniors that are on kind of lockdown in our facilities. So we'll be today delivering mm -hmm. fresh produce into those facilities. We'll get volunteers to uh, separate that, put it on carts and, and wheel that around the building and get it safely to people so that they can access some of that fresh produce. So these are things we can quickly be flexible uh, on and, and work to create safety for, uh, for everybody that is uh, involved with that. And then finally, our Railton place in the Tenderloin, we have the Railton uh, Croc Center. Railton is 110 units of housing. Uh, 55 of those are permanent supportive housing for homeless individuals. The other 55 are a transitional two to three year length housing, uh, broken down. Uh, some rooms are for veterans, some are for sober living, some are for aged out foster youth. And so uh, we obviously um, uh, are keeping that program up and running. It is uh, obviously their individual unit. So those people are in a safe place. We're limiting uh, people entering and exiting. Of course, uh, we are uh, in the same as we are with the Silvercrest residents providing food and making sure that they have their needs met so that no one has to exit to, to even head to a local grocery store as much as we can, as we can avoid that. And so that, uh, that program is going, the, the Croc Center facility, which is a beautiful gym. Uh, it is uh, education, it's a fitness center. It provides health and wellness for families. Obviously that, that whole center is, is basically shut down at this time. We do not want people coming in from the community and mingling together. And so that is uh, on, on shutdown. Although I'm happy to tell you, uh, again, starting on Monday, the Croc Center will provide, will open to provide emergency daycare for 25 kids for, as, for children of our first responders and, uh, and our health professionals. So that's a program with the um, Department of uh, Children, Families and Youth. Uh, we'll be uh, opening a 25 um, child emergency day center only for our first responders and for medical professionals beginning Monday. And so we will um, transition the Croc Center into that type of a facility to help uh, with that. Uh, we have a weekly food distribution as well uh, in partnership with the uh, San Francisco Marine Food Bank. And that's how we provide uh, our, our food boxes primarily to people. We don't do it necessarily on a day-to-day -day basis, but we do mass distribution with significant food boxes. Um, and so we're ramping up uh, Thursday and Friday of this week. We're preparing for 650 plus households <laughs> to come to us. We have distribution sites in Soma, in the Tenderloin, in Chinatown. And so we'll have um, 650 uh, food um, boxes prepared and ready to go out to uh, households in, in the community. Uh, obviously we're, we're doing things differently with masks and gloves and social distancing. And uh, we're doing everything we can to protect, protect our officers and our volunteers and our staff and um, and so we're just open and we're serving and we're doing what we can during these, uh, these days of, of crisis to keep things uh, going. Uh, we have a number of facilities. So uh, one of the, the blessings that the Salvation Army has in the communities, because we've been here so long, we have over years accumulated a number of, of properties. So we own 14, 15 properties. We've, we've made uh, all of our properties available to the state, to city, to county. If there's any need for quarantine sites, for storage facilities, uh, for um, training facilities, for case management, then we have made our facilities all open and available to state, local, uh, county reps for any needs that we can uh, we can assist with. We have four uh, church congregations, Salvation Army congregations in San Francisco. They've all gone to digital and virtual services. So this is all very new for us, uh, but they are keeping in contact with their congregation members uh, in, a, in, a new, uh, in a new way. And so uh, we are, as you can see, very, very busy. We're doing everything we can um, to just assess the situation daily, to be flexible, to respond to needs as they come arise, to protect and continue the critical services that we offer. And uh, like we all are, we're just managing this uh, a moment by moment, day by day, and uh, just being ready for whatever the future holds um, to continue to be um, this uh, consistent organization to support people in need. So I guess that's my, my brief overview. I know the time has kind of gone over a little bit. I'm not sure if there's any questions or if you uh, um, eager to wrap up the uh, the meeting here, but that's uh, that's my brief report for you. Thanks for your attention. Um, 
Craig, how do you feel? Uh, well, thank you, you know, for the, the presentation. It was great. And how, when did, when did the Salvation Army come to San Francisco? Was it 1883, you said? Yes, 1883. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. you're, you're part of a tremendous legacy. Yeah. That, that you know, and you, you guys do such a great job. You know, Thank a you. lot of us in the club are affiliated or we support the Salvation Army. And um, we actually went over to the, um, uh, the Navig, was it, it's not, it's a navigation center. What'd you, what was the, what's the term? There are navigation centers in the city, but we don't, we don't run a navigation center. No, no, all. no. It was the one over on South of Market. It's the. Um, oh, uh, our Silver Crest, our senior facility, uh, Harbor Light. You Harbor Light, yeah. Yeah, Harbor Light. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. We, we, did a, right. we did a field trip to Harbor Light, and it was fantastic. Right. Yeah, and it yeah. was um, really impressive. Yeah. So Thank you. Um, yeah, I, it, it, this was great. Why don't we open it up for questions? you guys have questions? We can, uh, anyone have a question for, you know, Major Norton? Well, one, thank you for your presentation and your contribution to our city. I did not know about Prince Charles. <laughs> okay. So, no doubt my brother will tell me when I, I call him in 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, my concern is the homeless. Their mm -hmm. challenge is to keep clean. Mm -hmm. I know that you're helping feed them, but yeah. what can they do to get the services they need? Yeah. Well, this is, you know, this is the dilemma. Um, you know, we're obviously in close contact with, uh, with both the Department of Public Health, with uh, uh, homelessness and supportive housing agencies. Uh, we do have facilities that are available to put people in. We, we have a warehouses, we have gymnasiums, things like that. And in the past, we have been able to open those for emergency disaster situations. If there's been a fire and things like that, we've taken people in on an emergency basis. The, the concern is that the, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, is saying that um, unless you have individual rooms or apartments for people, it is not healthy to take a group of people off the street and just put them into a, a mass a place with a roof over. They're actually saying it's better that we provide hand washing and, and, and food and keep them where they're at. So obviously we're, you know, we're, we're working with the city. Um, you've met Theo Ellington. He's, he's our director of um, homeless initiatives. We have, a, we have a tremendous plan to help uh, use our facilities in the future to add beds, to uh, create more Salvation Army services for people in need. But at this time, um, we're, we're kind of, we're, we're in tandem with the city. It sounds like the city are going to, uh, based on the CDC guidelines, are looking to open up uh, hotel rooms and move some homeless into into individual rooms, which is what the guidelines are, that we don't um, create this pandemic, um, uh, an outbreak within the homeless community. And so we're obviously standing ready. Uh, we have facilities ready to, to offer to the city. And if it comes that uh, that people are gonna be put in hotels, then then we stand ready put, to provide meals, to provide uh, you know supportive services in that way. So. Um, but you're right, Patricia, that is, it's our biggest concern uh, for the people on the streets, for a, a possible outbreak. They are, they are our most vulnerable population together with the seniors. And uh, it's certainly a group that we're praying for every day. And uh, we, you know, we just stand ready to assist the city and the county with whatever the Salvation Army can do. We will marshal every resource that we have um, to support in whatever is best for, for that group. Good question. Any other questions? I have a question. Where, where are those hotels that you just mentioned? Are they in the city? I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, I just was briefed yesterday that uh, I don't know if Theo wants to chime in at all here, but um, I believe that in today or in the next day or two, they'll be the city will be rolling out a, a, a more of a plan for, for what's uh, yeah, just the homeless. Because I think we all realize that this, you know, we haven't even peaked in the crisis yet, the pandemic. Uh, we've got uh, probably a couple of weeks of, of really difficult days before us. So, uh, Theo, I heard you chiming in there. Yeah, just real briefly, um, the city passed a resolution at the last Board of Supervisors meeting to um, officially negotiate with hotels. I know they're working with the unions to figure out sort of staffing mechanisms. Um, they put out a call. I think the hotels collectively responded. And there's about 8,000 um, uh, uh, rooms that have been made available. 
Um, like I mentioned, the unions are now talking through staffing and uh, service providers are talking through resources. Um, the challenge is that there are very strenuous um, uh, sort of details that have to um, all work into play for these hotels to work out. Um, so uh, central air, central heating is not ideal because the virus can then spread uh, through the vents, et cetera. Um, you know, you look at communal space and you look at uh, other things where folks are gathering, they want to limit that as much as possible. So um, uh, the, the, the city's working through those minor details before um, they reach out to us for specifics around uh, providing services. Oh, this is Bert. I've got a question. Um, Harbor Light is coming up. Have you figured out how you're going to have a virtual celebration or dinner or anything like that or just, a, uh, just cancel it altogether? Well, we have canceled. Um, so our, the, the Harbor Light uh, program has had an annual fundraising dinner called the Lighting the Way Dinner. Uh, this was our 79th annual year. We had it all locked in at the Marines Memorial for April, April the 8th. So obviously we've had to cancel that event. And because of the uncertainty of the days ahead and, and where we're going, we've had to kind of pull that back. Um, we're grateful that that uh, we have a couple of sponsors that really help to uh, undergird the cost of that, and they have allowed us to keep their donation. Um, in fact, the director of our Arbolite Center, Major David Pierce, uh, did go online and has posted a, a clip expressing appreciation, letting people know that we have uh, had, had to cancel that, and um, just inviting people if, if they uh, you know had purchased a table or made that, if they would still allow their contribution to go to the work of Arbolite right now. But yeah, the event has been canceled for this year, unfortunately. Um, but we'll have lots of stories to tell uh, when we when we when we put the next one in place. Do we have anyone else? Any other questions? Yeah, I I, I would just like to add to that. Uh, we could, you could, for those who would like to to help support the Salvation Army and the mission in all these different ways and these programs that Major Darren mentioned, uh, we, you can go to our website. I think, Carrie, you can actually email uh, the various ways that um, uh, through some links on, on uh, our websites and, and inform people how they can support the Army. All right. Sure. Thanks, Ernst. Thank you. All right. Well, um, unless anyone else has any other questions, why don't we um, end the meeting and uh, uh, Darren Norton, uh, again, thank you for joining us yeah. and sharing. And, um, you know, we wish you well in, in supporting our community right now. And if anyone knows anybody that can help uh, support the Salvation Army, please get them in touch with Carrie or, or Darren, Darren Norton. Um, Antonio? Oh. Quick comment here, guys. For folks who are doing meetings on Zoom throughout the week besides this meeting, if you send them to me, if you email them to me, we can do a bulletin with all the various Zoom groups that are meeting during the course of the week so folks can feel free to log into them and, and spend more time together uh, during the course of the week in between meetings. So if you have a Zoom meeting where people are invited to come join to learn something or some mm -hmm. other engagement just to keep you active, uh, why don't you send me the link and we'll post it in the bulletin. We'll send that out so folks have those links. And also resource emergency resources that are available to folks. Let's, let's start using the bulletin to start letting folks know what's going on. So things for the Salvation Army or any other groups, the Rotary, what have you. Send me links to websites for emergency information. Send me links for Zoom calls. Just send them over to me and we'll start putting it in the bulletin and we'll do more regular bulletin posting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President Craig, before we give Darren our take off our microphones and wild applause, I, I hope that this will be a regular Zoom get together every week until we meet in person. Oh, I think absolutely. Yeah. Until we have the green light to meet in together, let's just make this a normal staple of our, uh, our regular breakfast club. We'll do this every week and um, we'll have to change it around a little bit. I learned a few things today, um, you know, because people want to talk. So we, you know, <laughs> we'll have to kind of reel that in a little bit. Um, and then also, uh, I think it's important for um, our members and our guests. Next next week, we'll do the same thing. So please and follow up with people that aren't here, um, or if you, you would like to, you know, come back, or you have somebody else you'd like to bring with you. We'll open it up to more people. So um, I just want to encourage everyone to reach out to our community. 
and just let them know that we haven't forgotten about them. And we look forward to seeing everybody next week. And we'll send out information um, through various sources. Uh, right, Antonio? Yes, yes. Also, one thing to you guys, if you have your ne next door account, if we'll get these links here for the next meeting, you could post, I think you should be able, and I did it last night, post the link to this meeting in your next door account. That's a good idea. So folks from your local community okay. can come and join the Zoom calls as well. Yep. And right. Craig, Craig I one- something. For next week, I am in the process of organizing our new, our guest speaker for next week will be Jin. I don't have his last name right now, but he's a Japanese boat builder. He's building a reed boat at the Sausalito Yacht Club. He's working with Tom Kowalski, one of our members. He'll be visiting us and talking to us from Tokyo, Japan. So that's uh, 16 hours ahead of us. Wow. Uh, he will be live talking with us on Zoom next week. Great. Yeah, that's a, you know, you raised a good, good point, Tony, because you know, people can come and visit our club from anywhere in the world. So there's no geographic limitation on this format. Yes, right. much like the disease, there is no discrimination. We'll take <laughs> anybody can come. Craig, Craig I'd li like to also remind people that Jorge works three jobs. And I don't know about the rest of the staff, but if there's something that people are willing to do to support him while they're out of work, um, I think that would be wonderful. Have you have you talked to Jorge or anybody? No, the, no, I just talked. Yeah. I know that he runs three jobs. That's all. No, okay. Um, yeah, I think that's a larger discussion, but maybe what we could do is you and I can talk offline and we can put out something to the members. Would that, that would be great. That'd okay, be great. Let, yeah, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Okay. Any, anyone else? Thank you, Teresa, for your comments in chat. All right. Well, I guess that's it. Let's go ahead and, um, and again, let's give uh, Major Norton a, a wide applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Oh, well. All right. You guys have a great day and uh, be sure to follow up with all our the members that aren't here. Just, you know, just give somebody a call today. And that's, that's the point. Make, Make a call. Yeah. All right. A historic day. Great. Yes. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. Huh? Make, <clears throat> make sure you hang up. Well yeah. hang up. Yeah, please make sure you hang up. Gotta hang up. Stop video. Leave meeting. Okay. Ah. Hey Betty. Lower hi, how are you? Good yourself. Good. Lower right hand column or corner of the screen if you're on a computer to yeah. lead the meeting. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Talk to you T soon. T Tony, one thing that's really good is you can hear everybody clearly at the yep. meetings. It's really hard. Yeah, it so is. This was, this was great. You could really focus and concentrate. So, yes, very much so. Just yeah. got to come up with a way to get to everybody in there. So, yeah. Hi, right. Tony. Commendations. Thank you. Thank you for all you've Thanks done. Thanks for doing this. My pleasure. Y'all have a good nice week. Take, take care. Maybe I'm we'll have a hundred next week. A hundred. Yes. Yeah, we had thirty-five today. So let's see how we let's go for a goal of a hundred next week. You know, I didn't send out my normal email to over a hundred people, so now I can at least put this in how well it works. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Good. All right, great. Thank you all for all right. attending. We'll talk to you next oh, week. Tom, I just want to say that I, I'm in a movie group and we did a Zoom chat and I did a Zoom chat with my team meeting. We do a team meeting every day. Uh -huh. So I figured out how to do it. So Excellent. Um, yeah, it's, it works well, I think. Yeah. I'll try to do it again. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely good to keep contact and yeah. see people. So I've got to go to work, so uh, it's I'm, wonderful. I'm working away. Okay. Thank you, Tony. Bye. I'll have fun.